Hello, welcome to Live Labs. This is an edited version of a section of my stream that I'm doing every Saturday at 9 p.m. EST. If you'd like to participate in the next stream, drop by my Twitch and contribute to the discussion. You might even get featured in the video. In today's video, I'll be discussing some of the advantages of FJAC DARE, which is a small optimization that allows Falco to use DARE more freely in neutral. All right, so obviously, as y'all have seen, I'm just constantly posting about this the past few days. A lot of times with this kind of stuff, it's like a boy who cried wolf sort of situation. A lot of times I'm like, oh, this will change the meta. This is going to be so important. And then it doesn't end up actually being that important. I think this is legitimately super strong. Seems simple, but you have to do it in a particular way. So there's two ways to do it. The first one requires you to delay your dare. So you have to hold shield or do whatever. You can be standing around and you dare between one and three frames after jump squad is over. And what this does for you is that you forward jump. I'm holding forward here and you can see I have full forward momentum as soon as I leave the ground. This is different than if I were to press the dare early, even though I'm holding forward, I go straight up and then I start drifting forward. This definitely hurts the range. You can get a lot more range out of this if you jump forward first, and the easiest way to do this is to delay it. Delaying it also helps in a few other ways. It just places the hitboxes further. Since you're doing it slightly delayed by a few frames, you can move forward further. The sweet spot hits a little higher, and the sour spot hits lower, which is important. Sometimes against some characters like Pikachu, you need to do it delayed if you want to hit him. This method is bufferable. It's a bufferable forward jump auto cancel there. On the first frame, you have to jump. And then within the next two frames, you have to press down an A. And before jump squad is over, you have to roll the stick to the forward position. And if you do this, you'll both buffer the dare out of jump squat and you'll forward jump. So this one is slightly more precise than the other one. This this delayed one has a three frame success window. This one is technically two back to back two frame windows. It's slightly more precise. I will say that it's not very hard. I'm able to do this one pretty consistently. It's not that bad. The key advantages to doing this one over the non-buffered one, the delayed one like this, is that because it's bufferable, it comes out slightly faster. And because it's bufferable, it's double shield compatible. So all the double shield macros that Gimmer and Seabrick were talking about do work with the buffered version of this. Because it comes out a little faster, it ends up not having as much range. It's slight, but it's noticeable. And because the spike hitbox comes out lower, it's better in some specific situations. Situations. The one that comes to mind is for tech chasing. So in this case, Pikachu bounces really high up in the air and it's better to buffer the dare here so that it clips him on the way up. There are a lot of ranges where this dare can hit where down to will not hit. The sour spot hitting is fine, especially because there are plenty of follow ups that are sour spot specific, actually. So doesn't really matter if you sweet spot, but the sweet spot also has plenty of range. I would put it at about the end. The tip of down tilt is how much range the sweet spot has against most characters. So besides this, you might be thinking, OK, well, you've drifted super far forward, so now you can't really retreat. But that's not the case, and it's because Falco has a very high air acceleration stat. This is not airspeed. Note that I'm saying air acceleration and not like velocity or something. When I say that Falco has good air acceleration, I mean that he can change directions in the air very quickly and affect his momentum very quickly. So if you're doing something like this where you're jumping forward and then holding back, you can actually drift very far back before you land. Besides that, the move just has tons of hurtbox shifting in a few different forms. The first form is when you're reeling up to do the move, you're shifting your body super far away from them. So it can avoid a lot of attacks. This can jump Roy Jab, can jump EWGF, it can jump Terry Jab, it can jump a lot of moves. On the very next frame, he fully extends in one frame. Your hurtbox is shifted all the way back and then there's no travel time. This part of the move is instant and it lets it trade with a lot of things that you wouldn't expect. 
There's also the hurtbox shifting that you experience on landing because it's an auto cancel and you can turn around during auto cancel lag. Look at, look at the pose that Falco's doing. Not only is he crouching like away from you, but he's kind of shifting into the Z axis. He's super low and you can buffer shield pretty much immediately. And because you're sliding from the auto cancel, you actually slide in your shield. It's pretty crazy just how much you shift away from the opponent after you land. You can also choose to not do this just by not holding back here. This move is also extremely active. You'd be surprised just how active it is. It's not as active as moves like Link Nair or something, but it is out for a fair amount of time. The sweet spot is active for five frames, and then the sour spot is active for another 10 frames after that. So it's active for 15 frames. The gap between the last active frame and when you're actionable is about nine to 10 frames. It's pretty good in that department as far as active frames. The issue with Nair and Fair, which are way more active, you can't auto cancel these moves at a short hop. And in the case of Fair, which is your most active move by a fair margin, it's fair margin. This move is super active and you can change how active it is depending on how you land and when the final hitbox comes out and when the landing hitbox comes out. It's very active. The issue is that on landing you take I what I remember to be 15 frames of landing lag. You're stuck here for a while. If you're using fair and neutral you're stuck like you really they can definitely sweep you to whiff punish you where when you're doing dare, you just auto cancel and get out of there. You can space this move on shield and fade back quite a bit. The issue is that if you whiff and the opponent is not in shield, then they can definitely counter hit you out of your lag. This, not so much. It's ha I've, I've been around the scene for a while and people have talked about this in the past. What gives, right? It's like, why weren't we doing this? And I think it comes down to not having good punishes off of all the hits. So using down air is good pressure to the opponent's shield? Yes, very. Before I can really talk about specific combo examples, I have to really explain the situations in which you can hit this. When I'm about to hit the move, I don't know if it's going to hit sweet spot or if it's going to hit sour spot. I only know that after I've hit them. So already there's two different things that can happen here, right? It can sweet spot them or sour spot them. And both of them have different follow-ups. I'm going to set the percent to not zero because it's a little tricky to actually punish people at zero. If I sweet spot them, it's pretty easy to follow up. And if I sour spot them, it's also pretty easy to follow up depending on the spacing. Clearly you can do follow-ups, but you have to respond to what hit happens, right? Not only will it change between the sour spot and the sweet spot, but if they were to jump, it's going to hit different. First of all, if it's a sweet spot, it's going to put them on the ground. This is OK, though, and you can still combo off of it. The last kind of wrinkle in this is the sour spot is out for a long time out for 10 frames here. So if you hit with the early part of the sour spot, this part, if I hit with this part of the move, I'm going to have way less frame advantage than normal. This kind of makes the combo situation a little different if you hit with the early part of the sour spot rather than the late part. That gives us six categories. It gives us sweet spot on the ground, sweet spot in the air, and then you have kind of like the middle hit on the ground and the middle hit in the air. The late hit on the ground and the late hit in the air. Here's a few examples of how these follow ups can be different, but still useful.
Hey, thanks for watching. Tune into the stream next time at 9pm EST and leave a comment on this video to let me know what I should cover next.